welcome back in this lecture we will look at the first chapter uh, the introductory chapter of this book so professor khan traces the genesis of material science um he rightly says that metallurgy always existed okay in some form or the other or more precisely in an empirical form if you look at the iron age the bronze age and so on so there has been uh human interactions with metallurgy by heating or uh baking or heating materials to change their properties okay so that always existed but a material science emerged uh perhaps in a more structured way only in 1950s so specifically uh, material science um uh, try to establish uh, principles underlying the property of material science so that was the goal of material science whether we can establish the principles uh, underlying the property of material science so that there was a textbook and so on in 1950 so um uh, that's a clear time point in emergence of material science as a discipline so many of the metallurgy departments uh, uh had a name change into uh, metallurgy and material science uh, or metallurgy and materials engineering so this ha happened uh, first in united states then in other parts of the world um and in india too so at that time when this transformation was occurring material science was defined uh via these sub disciplines material processing was considered solid state chemistry uh polymer science engineering material characterization tools biomaterials and theory of material uh, were emphasized so it is to be noted that from the beginning material science was interdisciplinary this was a very inherent uh, feature of material science i always stress that there are two things that cuts across all departments in probably any university one is computing so computing is all pervasive irrespective of disciplines okay likewise materials also cuts across all uh, science and engineering departments so in in some ways material science has always been interdisciplinary so it, he also traces uh, material science and engineering in industry uh, interestingly i think um, my, the interdisciplinary nature of material science was practiced in the industry well before it took shape in university setting that is because if you think about product development part, product development is always interdisciplinary in the sense that even if it's let's say a chemical product suppose say you take a battery uh, development uh, or fuel cell development you may think that this is done by chemical engineers or chemists and so on but when you look at a uh, battery management system or uh, the other components that goes into supplying fuels uh, to a fuel cell and so on that requires lot of uh, process control um mechanical engineering and aspects of electrical engineering so product development has always been interdisciplinary so in a way material science engineering in its interdisciplinary form was uh practiced very nicely in the industry even though uh, even before it was done in, in the university setting so uh, the quintessential um uh players in this feel was perhaps in the early stages two big labs one is the bell labs um for example if you look at um uh, hard metallic superconductors okay so this is probably uh, electronic properties of materials this is mechanical property of materials that has to be brought together for practicing getting superconductors out, out in practical applications uh, so besides um transistor development in uh bell labs uh, where a lot of physicists uh, worked with electrical engineers and brought out very important 
um, electrical engineering devices, um, there are a lot many examples where interdisciplinary material science thrived in a laboratory, industrial laboratory setting. So another place where uh, this was very well demonstrated via a variety of examples is the General Electric Industrial R&D Lab. So if you look at how do you optimize a ductile uh, material, in this case tungsten for light bulbs, okay? So uh, what kind of design principles were used to optimize uh, a light bulb? That itself is a very fascinating re uh, reading. Even though uh, light bulbs looks like a very simple device, what had to be done to bring to fruition of uh, of a long-lasting light bulb. That makes very interesting reading. So you should take a look and appropriate references are provided in this book. So another person, um, a specific person, specific scientist uh, is Langmuir. Okay, so he was a general electric. Um, uh, he excelled in the practice of heterogeneous catalysis and surface chemistry. So he brought in a variety of material science characterization tools and techniques for the practice of uh, what is a fairly applied and a field that has a lot of consequence in practical engineering. Okay, so uh, again, so references are provided in this book. So he also quotes lots of examples like man made uh, diamonds, uh, some thermal insulation, translucent alumina and particle uh, detectors, okay, nuclear technology and so on. So please go through these references if, uh, to understand um, uh, at least some of these case studies that are being mentioned. Uh, and another important aspect uh, which uh, made material science very strong in uh, United States, not only in the United States, in other parts of the world, like in India, are specialized laboratories. Okay, So this materials research laboratory was not defined within one department. It was located within universities. It was meant to bring different departments together. So, uh, so that is that has certain advantages. Uh, so that was... Uh, done in a very structured way by specialized material research, M MRL. Uh, uh, these are institute, there are, these are structures within the institute. These are still, um, uh, they, they still thrive in many U.S. universities and uh, where I uh, practice my work, which is in Indian Institute of Technology at Kanpur, we have a similar structure uh, what is called, ad, what is still called Advanced Center for Material uh, Science and Material Science Program. This was um, nucleated in 1972 uh, and still being uh, uh, practiced in IIT Kanpur. So he also mentions, mentions some important references uh, by a very distinguished practitioner of material science, Rustam Roy. He wrote about interdisciplinary Interdisciplinary, uh, what it means to do interdisciplinary work, how we nurture interdisciplinary science and engineering. So uh, appropriate references are also provided in this book. So in the next chapter, we will look at how different disciplines related to material science uh, emerged. Uh, that, uh, again, makes very interesting reading. Uh, so we'll look at that in the next chapter. Thank you.